So last time we got our posts displaying in a recycler view, now we need to attach an onclick listener to each post so that when we click on it, it opens to a new view where we can see details about the post. That's what we're going to be working on in this one. So to start off, we need to build the layout for that file. So let's go up into app, uh, oh, into resources, layout, and create a new layout resource file. And we're going to call it fragment, whoops, fragment view post. And I'm going to change this to a relative layout. And that file already exists. Apparently, I've already made that. Fragment view post. That's layout view post. There's fragment view post. OK, apparently, I made it already. Um, but it's just an empty layout. So OK, so there we go. We have it. And I'm just going to copy and paste this in because, as I mentioned in other videos, I don't want to spend time sitting here coding out a layout. I think it's really boring to do. And it's also probably really boring for you to watch. So just get the code on my GitHub, link is in the description as always, and just paste in the layout just like I'm doing. Okay, so there we have our layout. Looks like we need to add, let's see, we need to add this teal on click red to the button. So the layout's pretty basic. We just have uh, a square image view at the top and then kind of everything is below that. But we need to get this teal on click red drawable resource. So go into drawables and you know, actually, I'm just going to copy paste this in also. So just get this also from my GitHub page. If you watched any of my other videos, we do this quite a bit building these, uh, these layout or these drawable resource files, they just have two different states, uh, one when it's pressed and one when it's not pressed. So the color changes basically, uh, depending on if the user presses it or if they don't. And there we go. So that error goes away. And there we have our layout. So that is going to be our layout for viewing posts. So we can close that and Close that, close that, and let's create a new fragment class. So right click on the main package directory, go to new, and this is going to be called uh, view post fragment. Apparently I already made that too. View post fragment. Oh, I did. Okay. I must have made all these layouts ahead of time. So there we go. We're in our class view post fragment, and now we need to write the code. So when viewing the post, I just kind of want to start by first getting the post information. So going basically from search fragment to view post fragment and make sure that the data is transferred properly. And so the way we're going to do this is I'm going to pass the post ID because each post has an ID when the user clicks on it. So right from the post list adapter, we're going to attach an on click listener. Remember we did two videos ago right here and we're going to send the ID of the post into view post fragment. And how we're going to retrieve it is we're going to override the on create method, not on create view. We're going to override the on create method. I don't know why I can't see it on create. On create. On create. Yeah, there we go. I don't know why it wasn't showing up there. Maybe I typed something wrong. Uh, and then we're going to create a global variable called post ID. So bars private. Um, I guess string m post ID. And then inside of the onCreate method, the onCreate method gets called before onCreate view. In case you didn't know that, in a fragment class, so we can say on or we can say post ID equals string and just say get arguments. Whoops, get get arguments and then get the keyword which is going to be post ID. So r dot string dot post ID. I need to add that to our strings file. You know, I'll create a I'll create another section here for intent intent extras and bundle arguments and they'll just say this is post ID I can say arg arg post ID and then we'll add that here so arg post ID and that will retrieve it from the bundle and then I can print it out to the log also so got the post ID and then just say m post ID and so there we go. So that will retrieve the post ID and then we can use it to get the rest of the information on the post. So let's go into post list adapter and write the uh, required code to send that to view post fragment. Okay, so let's see here. We want to uh, view the frag the post in more detail. And so we go fragment fragment equals fragment and we can do search activity 
and we want to reference uh, our support fragment manager. So get support fragment manager, and then we can do find fragment by by tag. And this is a these are keywords to that we can use to find a fragment that was used to set up with a view pager. So we go uh, switcher no space there, and then r dot id dot view pager container to reference our view pager container, and then plus another colon. And we'll do next line and then search activity uh, context. And then we can do M view pager to reference the view pager that's inside search activity and then do dot get current item to get the, the fragment number. So this probably looks kind of confusing, but basically what it's doing is I have to do this because we have two, we're going to have two different situations. Um, one situation is going to be if we're, viewing a post like this uh, and we just want to see more information on the post. Another situation is if we're in the watch list and then we open a post, it's going to inflate the same fragment and that's why we need to uh, differentiate right here. So right now I'm figuring out which, which, which fragment we're in. So whether we're in search fragment or whether we're in watch list fragment. If we're in search fragment, that means we're in number zero, fragment zero. If we're in watch list fragment, that means we're in fragment one. So this is fragment zero. This is fragment one. And so that's what why I need to do this. But first we need to check if the fragment isn't null. So we just check it like that. And now we check to see which fragment number it is. So we do fragment.gettag.equals and we do Android colon switcher and we reference our view pager, so view.id.viewpager container, and then we reference the number. So there's two fragments that we're looking for, and one is going to be the number two, and one is going to be number one. So then we can do an else if, uh, whoops, I hit alt, not control, and paste that, and then we can do a number one right here. So what we're doing is we're looking for fragment number zero, which is the search fragment right here, or fragment number one, which is watch list fragment, because those are the two situations that we need to handle. And then depending on which situation we have, we would inflate a different fragment. So that's why I'm checking right here. Those are these two conditions. So um, I guess search fragment, and this would be watch list fragment. I can say aka number zero, aka number one. Okay, so now inside here, uh, we can log it and say uh, switching to that fragment, which is going to be uh, the, so m context get string r dot string dot view so fragment view post is the one we're switching to here and then in the other situation we'll be switching to fragment watch list that's basically what's happening okay so now what i want to do is i want to execute a method inside search fragment that's going to inflate another fragment on top of the current one so that's what's that's what's happening so that probably sounded confusing i'll uh, explain it Make sure I have the test application open here. So what's happening when you actually click on one of these posts is another container is being inflated on top of the one that's behind it. We're not actually switching out the fragments. I'm inflating a whole new one on top of it. So that's what we need to do. If we look at uh, which layout is it? Search fragment. So fragment search. Uh, down at the bottom here, we have this frame layout and it's currently visibility is set to gone. That's the one that we're going to be inflating. So if we look into search fragment, we can actually create that widget. Do M frame layout equals frame layout view find view ID r dot ID dot container container is its name. And that this is the one that's going to get inflated. So we're going to create a method down here and make it public. So public uh, void we'll call it view post and it's going to take the post ID because you remember from our view post fragment, we're getting the ID through arguments in the bundle. So we need to pass the ID and we're just going to do a plain old fragment transaction here and pass the, the, the post ID through the bundle. So let's go view post fragment fragment equals new view post view post fragment. And then we can do um, fragment transaction. So fragment transaction, transaction equals uh, which it's get activity and then get support fragment manager and then begin transaction 
and then we create the bundle. So bundle args equals new bundle. And then we want to attach the arguments to the bundle. In this case, that's the post ID. So put we just put string, get string r r dot string dot post ID, argument post ID, and then pass that post ID. And then we can do fragment dot set arguments to those arguments. And then we can do the fragment transaction. So we do fragment dot oh no transaction dot uh, replace r dot id dot container which is that frame layout container then we pass our fragment and then we do we uh, reference the name so that's going to be view fragment view post and then transaction add to backstack and reference the name once more r dot string dot fragment view post and then we do the transaction, so transaction.commit. And then one last thing we need to do because the frame layout is currently set to gone, we gotta set it to being visible. And that, that will inflate our fragment. So this method is basically the one we wanna call inside post list adapter, so right here. So we need to reference our fragment, so I'm gonna copy this line up here, post, paste it down here. I'm gonna change this to search fragment. Um, I can still call that fragment, that doesn't matter. Change this to search fragment. Oh, I gotta change the name actually. Search fragment, and now we can reference that method. So do search fragment uh, dot view post, and then we can pass the post ID. So to get the post ID, we do m post dot get uh, position. So pos. Uh, notice I've created this final variable up here. Final pos equals the position, just to reference the position. And then we do get post ID, and that's it. That will inflate our fragment. Um, this probably seems confusing to you right here, but basically all it's doing is now that we know that the current fragment is the search fragment, I can get an instance of that fragment, the current instance of it, by doing this. I'm referencing its ID, getting it by referencing its ID or its tag, sorry. Um, and then we can use the reference to it to use the method view post which we've defined in here, which is now gonna inflate that new fragment on top of our current view. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's test. Okay, let's search for everything. So there we go, we see a bunch of the posts. Now let's click one. And looks like it's not inflating. Let's take a look at the log. So it's saying selected a post, so this line is running right here, so uh, what must be happening is either the fragment is null or this if statement isn't correct. Fragment, oh, switch, this has got to be switcher, not switch. That's probably, that's probably what it is. Let's rerun it. Okay, we'll search again. Click on a post, and we get a crash. Okay, so that's, that's progress. Let's see what the crash is. Um... Error inflating. Let's see. Click on this. So this is the problem. It says it can't inflate. Did it actually get the ID before it crashed? Uh, yeah. So on create got the post ID. So that's working. That's good. Um, for some reason, it's crashing when it's trying to inflate fragment view post. Let's take a look at fragment view post. Oh, I see. Uh, because I, It's because I copied the XML from my test app, so this is wrong. So the square image you referenced was wrong. It had, it had test in the name, so that package doesn't exist in this project. So that didn't work, obviously. That should take care of it. It was working. Everything was working. We were successfully able to see the post ID, which is what we were after. So this should clean up now that last little, little problem we were seeing. Okay, let's search click on a post. There we go. Cool. So it's inflating. Obviously, it's not getting the data because all we have is the post ID being passed to it, but it is successfully inflating the layout that we want to see. So everything's working as we expect. So in the next one, what we'll do is work on querying the data using that post ID and populating this view with the correct information. So I'll see you guys in that next video.